Um, okay. Hi, Winers. Welcome back. It's your girl, P. It's producer Cinco, all Nike'd out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she asked me if I was uh, sponsored, but, you know. Yeah, not, our, guest, so just... our, our guest is very observant. She's like, Cinco, are you are you sponsored by Nike or yeah. do you just... Yeah, yeah, you're like sponsored. an off-camera sponsor. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah. It's like silent. It's like silent there. dedication to the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my guest Kay is here in the studio, which I'm very excited about. Um, Kay, I met her on the Nightcap, which I've talked about a lot that I've been doing. Shout out to Carolina and the Nightcap. Oh, yeah. um, and and I just thought this is so awkward, but like making friends or like networking as an adult is like kind of sometimes weird. Do I, you ever feel that way? I refuse to do it. Like I have like <laughs> Wait, a no new it. friends policy. Oh, so we're not. This yeah, so not... maybe don't jump. To... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe don't jump not, to conclusions. This is not what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, awfully, uh, awfully aggressive on that one. But yeah, no. I'm but pretty... it is. It's fucking weird. It's, it's fucking so weird. weird. Man, how old are you? If you don't mind, I'm 33. Asking. Okay, so I'm 31. Okay, so yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. It's weird. Like the Can networking. We cheers to like new friends. Cheers I guess to new friends. Now do we like clink to that being like a real thing? It's a real thing. I've been trying to make it a real thing bad in luck my you don't life. Drink it, by the way. Oh shit. Already off to a bad start. And bad also, sex I'm for seven years so sorry for everybody who just heard me slurp that. Part. Oh, no, it's okay. It was a very oh. loud slurp. Was it? <laughs> no, I didn't hear. I am my headphones. <laughs> oh, just from here, like, without the headphones, just for you. it sounds That was slow, a yeah. good one. Hey. Just for you. Nike over there. Some people like ASMR. Yeah, I'm not here for it. No? I'm not here for it. ASMR porn? No. Really? I kind of like it. In what regard? Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Continue on with whatever you're doing right now, and then we can get into it. <laughs> In what regard? <laughs> My word. <laughs> Have you ever listened to ASMR porn? I haven't. Hmm. It sounds slurpy and weird. <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's like um, someone telling you a story and just like turning you on. Like it's kind of nice. Okay, you're talking about like erotic, like reading. Yeah. Mine went like full like sound <laughs> effects in my brain, <laughs> which is like a very yucky place to go. <laughs> and I didn't like it. That's not, sorry. As someone who hates like any mouth be... noises in general. So what is it? What is ASMR? I don't know what that is. ASMR, what does it actually stand for? It's like, haven't you heard videos? Of, like, yeah, it's like audio like something, something, something. Yeah. Isn't definitely, that clear for you? Definitely the A is audio. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Or auditory, right, right. it might be auditory. So A's audio for sure. <laughs> or auditory, yeah. I feel like it might be auditory. But it's, it's like, have you not ever heard? Like, uh-huh. people will do it to, um, like, fix it videos on TikTok, like people organizing their refrigerator. Or like, and they like, have clacking the nails. On. Or yeah, like, like, rings. Oh, okay. ASMR. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it sounds for. It's producer, you're the, can you look it up for us? Yeah, do you not yeah. know how to Google? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google it and get back to us, because I'm yeah. interested. But yeah, I mean, it's not, some, not the point I take, like... Mm. Um, I don't watch that one all the time or hmm. listen to it all the time, but I'm like, okay, stumbled upon it and I like it. Okay, well, now you're like opening we're up a whole start, different conversation. We're starting out with a bang. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, I mean, not yet. I mean, we're only at the start of the porn <laughs> conversation. The start of the porn conversation. All right, so it says a feeling of well being combined with a tingling sensation in the scalp and right. down the back of the neck. I don't think that you're Googling that. Wildly correctly. detailed. <laughs> As experienced by some people in response to specific gentle stimulus, often nope. a particular sound. Okay. Well, but what is it? What's the but what does the stand acronym for? stand for? ASMR. Um, Google doesn't even know. No, it's uh, autonomous sensory meridian response. That's exactly what we said. Yeah. So that's pretty accurate. I've so, heard of all of those words. Yeah. And I could spell if I wouldn't have Googled, awesome. I would have never known. I would have never known. It's important not to brag on a podcast, right? Which is course. why we haven't. <laughs> Of course, important. remain <laughs> humble. Yeah, that's um, why. That's why we lied to you. And, yeah, <laughs> and that is so. On the nightcap, when I was like, I knew I liked her. When one, you made a delicious drink because you are a Jim Beam. <laughs> what is it? American whiskey ambassador. I know. But I love when people laugh in my face about my job. Is that it makes James? Me so no, happy. no, no. Is it James or Jim? What okay, is the well, actual I mean, name? I mean, how close are you with him? <laughs> Listen, he was my well whiskey at the bar I bartended okay, then at. You, I think you can call him Jim. I think we're on a first Yeah, but name. I think like if you don't know him, then it's like James Beauregard Beam. I wow, feel like then you're like full first really middle extra. and last E scenario. Okay. But it's like Jim Beam, you know? Uh, yeah. So it's the James B. Beam Distilling Company, okay. American Whiskey Ambassador, which is kind of a... A little bit of a mouthful. Yeah, a little bit. But that's, that's kind <laughs> not of Not in a sexual yeah. way. Not, yeah, a not even in like a dirty way. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I knew I liked you and made a delicious cocktail. And then on this episode, we were talking about entanglements and situationships, mm-hmm. which I did cover on last week's episode. I am no longer in those. They have been cut off. No entanglements, no situationships. I'm very we proud are doing of you. 
for honestly it was that episode that did it for yeah, me. Okay. I was like as I was speaking, I was like wow, I yeah. am in a messy way and I got to get out. My my issue with that and I'm not by any means plugging anything, but my issue with that episode was like everybody sitting on that couch as I was off to the bar side of things was like, yeah, we're all sorts of messed up and we're all like entangled and in situationships and we're not getting any and I was like why? Well, so I said I was getting any. I said, when, I was like, when I choose to. And I was also trying to be I didn't really believe politically you. correct. <laughs> I didn't believe you. You weren't saying like, with much confidence. Who's going to listen to this? That's what I was thinking. Is anyone that I am getting laid by going to per- Well, then they should be listening to it. Yeah. So I was. <laughs> and now I'm not anymore. Okay. Yeah. I was fully. Well, that's sad for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. We're on, uh, we're on to better, newer, better possibilities okay you think so is that true is that a thing are are we lying to each other what are we doing here we're hopeful okay i have boundaries now the next person it's been like a whole week and you've gained boundaries i feel like that was like three weeks ago when we filmed that actually i don't actually know anything about time yeah i think it was like three weeks ago and through talking with my therapist okay about how unhealthy an entanglement is a situationship i forget his name um the guy who was talking to me, like all this, all this knowledge was like a situationship Dennis. is okay. It's okay. the entanglement that is not. And I was like, you're so right. I'm in an entanglement mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's no clear view here. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, yeah, no, I have boundaries and we are dating okay. with intentions. Well, look, and- at, look at that. I'm I know. proud of you. That what was so your- fast. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a quick turnaround. <laughs> That's quick. what they all say. <laughs> I make a quick <laughs> manic decision, if you yeah, will. Okay, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's like pretty immediate. All right. Yeah. You're like, oh, I, I was on a show and now I'm out of everything else I've ever done. <laughs> now I, I'm I, actually a born-again virgin already. So. <laughs> a born-again yeah. virgin. No. I don't think that's how that works. I don't even know what that is, I really. don't know, and I don't think it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't think that's how that works. I don't think so either. <laughs> Are you in an entanglement or situation ship right now? Um, I don't. I don't really know how to answer that because it's one of those things where it's like seeing somebody, but yeah, I don't know so if it's like dating. a, yeah, I think it's just dating. I don't think it's like a situationship, but also like not quite in like that girlfriend scenario, mm-hmm. you know, um, maybe heading to that, but I don't really know, okay. like in that direction. Yeah. My headphones are falling off. I feel like a silly, I have tiny ears and a tiny head. Oh, opposite um, of me. Never have that problem. Yeah. I've always said that about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of that like weird scenario where it's like, it's not even weird. It's just the start of dating, right? Like, yeah. so it's hard to be like, oh, it's a situation ship or if it's an entanglement. It's a, just a new dating scenario. Right. Okay. I have more questions about that. But first, I want to ask you because I used to be in the restaurant industry, bartending industry. So when you said you were an American whiskey ambassador, I was like, how does that even come about? Because maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you can't. As um, a server and then a bartender and I tried managing and people were like, what are you going to do with your life? And I was like, kind of want to stay doing this. But then I know it's kind of looked down upon and it's kind of like not taboo, but like, oh, you're just a manager of a restaurant or you just do this like it can. But I thought that that was such a great like way to you don't have to just be a restaurant manager. There's other avenues where that can take you. So I just if you could tell me a little bit about like how that came about. Yeah, I I, want to say like first and foremost, like I think that the U.S., in general, in terms of a culture of hospitality, definitely to your point, kind of looks down on that level of service. Yeah. Like, which we shouldn't. No, like, there is no reason for it. It is a perfectly valid career choice if you were like, I want to be a server and a bartender for the rest of my and life. And have a great schedule and be able to. Because I'm going to tell you right now, some of the servers and bartenders that I know clear a significant dollar amount right. per year and they work four days a week yeah. and they get their weekends and they have their holidays and, and da, it's da, 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 da. And social and it's an exciting thing and it's an engaging career yeah. and it should be looked at as a career not a stepping stone to a career which i think we often look at as like an office you know base and i think right. that's a very u.s kind of objective mm-hmm. if you travel internationally you're like well why don't i tip for example why don't i tip my server in spain or italy or wherever right in like the europe or what have you a big portion of that is because that is a legitimate career they Mm. are paid a salary to do so we are just operating on a different model here in terms of like in terms of tipped culture and that so i want to kind of just like say fuck off to that mentality to anybody that has it because 
being in hospitality is an incredibly valid career and it's something that's incredibly important. How many times do we go out and celebrate an occasion or oh God, we go out and we chills. yeah like I want to go out and I, I'm having a, a wonderful night I want to celebrate it I'm mm-hmm. going to go to my favorite bar I'm going to go to the place that I love I want to go to a new place I want to celebrate with my friends whatever it is that experience you cannot create without the people that provide it for you wow right like and so let's not take away from that level of hospitality that yeah. is provided And for me, that is always something that's incredibly important. I grew up with hospitality kind of like running through my veins. My dad like worked in restaurants. My mom still works in restaurants. Like it's something that's really important to me. And so the idea of it being like a stepping stone is really frustrating because it's not. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm trying to even think because I started working in Washington State at 14 years old. Then I moved to California and started working at 16 at a restaurant. And I never really had that idea until I think that you know, I think our annoying managers, people are like, you know, putting them down maybe. But someone said to me, I was like breaking down boxes in the back one day and a customer was walking to his car. And he's like, don't you wish you stayed in school? And I was like, "Uh, wait, I am in school. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I told him, I was like, I'm graduated. This is my choice. I totally lied to put him in his place. But I think after that, I was like, oh, yeah, this is probably not a cool job to No, I I mean... I think that that's a whole different, not even a different, that's a whole addition to the conversation, right? Like being in hospitality is a choice. Mm -hmm. And being in hospitality is not something that for the longstanding version of being in hospitality is something that most people want to endure, Mm -hmm. right? Like being in hospitality is tough. Different levels of hospitality require different levels of skill set. And I'm telling you right now, like, I've worked in places where I've learned more about wine, spirits, food, whatever, hospitality standards, like operationally, those sort of things that you probably wouldn't expect because on the surface, it just seems really kind of rudimentary. Like you're seeing X, Y, and Z and you just are only receiving one portion of that service. The level that goes into studying and being a part of a hospitality community is really important. And like when folks sit there and do what they did to you and your experience in that and you receive that information of like don't you wish you stayed in school for fucking what Mm -hmm. yeah why like i went to school for i thought i was going to go into like communications and then i was like i love theater and that was the thing that i wanted to do and i was like i want to be a person who can like put on a show and understand why that's important understand the show of it all And in doing that, I took that to be kind of just like, I I don't know, like more of an exciting, like, how do we showcase ourselves and how do we show up in spaces? These goddamn headphones are falling off. They're gone forever. (laughs) I hate them. They're gone forever. You can take them off completely. They're gone forever. I hate them. Everybody who's watching this has my tiny head on here. You can take them off your neck too. No, I love them here. This is good. This is like, it's almost like a bow tie. It's like a neck pillow. Oh, this is good. Yeah. So if I take a nap. Like, don't mind. Um, <laughs> but I think that's an important thing. Like, the idea of stepping into hospitality in a way where you look at it as a legitimate career choice mm-hmm. is really important. It is not meant to be something that is not – or a second two, right? Like, for me and theater, it was like I'm constantly putting on a show for people. Yeah. Day in, day out. I step out my front door and I do that. I go to get a coffee and I do that. Right. Right? It's a different thing to think about theater and performance in that way. But we do it all the time. Totally. And so there's no reason for us not to. Like, and for me, stepping into theater was like, that's something I, I'm passionate about, it's something I want to study. Mm-hmm. What the fuck am I going to study math for? Why? Why? I don't care. I don't I care mean, about some, math. Sometimes I do wish I paid a little bit more attention. I mean, cause... yes. Do I wish I could do Excel <laughs> like a lot better than I do Excel? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, But like it's not necessary right. for me to do that. It's just truly not. Yeah. But if that's something that you love, go, go. Sure. Absolutely. And I applaud you for it. Yeah. But if it's not something you're passionate about, then who cares? Right. So I guess that's my point of like the, the whole idea of being like school and whatnot for what? What or were you having, studying originally? Or having, when that person asked you that, what were you studying? I was in fashion school. Okay, great. Yeah. And I was, in my head, I was like, if he only knew. <laughs> if he only knew, right? He's like, don't you wish you were in school? And it's like, what, for their hard science? Like, pff, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I applaud anybody who goes into the hard sciences. And I applaud anybody who goes into that. But it's just not, I don't know, it's not for it's everybody. It's not for everyone. And yeah. 
hospitality is a perfectly legitimate career. Right. That is my my PSA. I love career. it. That's a hill that you're going to die on. No, well, I think yeah, I'm, I'm, I will die on that. Like, there is nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of folks in my life who have been, like, in hospitality for 40-plus years and make way more money than folks that do not. Right. And I think I'm happy that you kind of went on that topic because I feel the same way, but I don't know that I would have put it as eloquently or, like... I don't know if that um, was eloquent, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, no, as I, I lost my headphones halfway through. <laughs> I don't know if that was eloquent. No, it was eloquent. <laughs> okay, so you did end up going, you're still in hospitality, but Correct. it's just a different avenue. So how did you become, uh, like, you travel all over the world to teach people about this whiskey? So yeah, how do you... Um, it kind of started as like, so I, I did like the bartending thing and then yeah. the bar manager and then I like kind of like went through the steps of like then beverage director and all of that. Um, and you know, hospitality on the ground can be really, really exhausting. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're working, especially bars and restaurants, like it can be 90 hours a week, which is a lot. And yeah. that was kind of where I found myself and didn't want to lose myself in that process. And I was very much like, oh, dear Lord, I have no idea who I am. My whole identity is wrapped up in this one building. Okay. And so needed to step away from that. Um, all love to the people I was working with, right? But just needed to take that step back. Um, and in doing so, found that education was kind of the thing I was really excited about. Like the trainings that I was giving to my team was like, oh man, like I'm really jazzed about this. Yeah. Uh, and I found a role with a rum company that I was working with at the time and they were like, oh, well, you could do education. That'd be cool. And then education kind of became a little bit more of like sales. And I was like, I don't really want to do that. Not for me. I'm in sales now. Um, And whiskey was kind of my passion outside of like wine. And it's like, and wine more so just like, that's really yummy. (laughs) It's like, I like to talk about it, but not so much like the nerdy, like nitty gritty stuff for whiskey. Um, And so I stepped into a role with Jim Beam and was super fortunate to have that. And that's what brought me actually to Houston. So from Boston, from Boston. Yeah. Okay. So and about a year ago. And you really do travel. um, I mean, I've only known you for a week or three weeks. We're not sure how long, but I did stop at least 18 years. (laughs) (laughs) I did stop your Instagram as one does. Yes. Um, Well, enjoy. Thank you. Um, But you you go all around. Like, is it all in the U.S. or do you go outside of the U.S. as well? My role is for central U.S. Okay. Um, So territories. Yeah. Like, uh, so we have somebody on the East Coast. We have somebody in the West Coast. Like, think like basically based on time zones is kind of how our structure is. Um, Yeah. So I basically cover all of the central U.S. uh, and then travel as necessary outside of that. But spend a whole bunch of time like you know like Chicago and Colorado here in Texas of course and then anything kind of in between uh heading to Minnesota like in the next like week and a half so oh my gosh it's so fun yeah it's a lot of fun um whiskey for me as long as I bartended and as long as I've been illegally drinking I was always like whiskey is say illegally or legally illegally (laughs) okay just just wanted to clarify I was drinking (laughs) since like 11 yes yes this one does (laughs) You know, just keg stand at mm-hmm. eleven. Yeah, well, um, so much easier when they're that young. <laughs> you're so light. <laughs> you're so light. <laughs> I am not endorsing underage drinking. Please, please, please know that. Must be twenty one. <laughs> yeah, consume. twenty one plus. <laughs> Jim Beauregard Beam. James. Jim. James. <laughs> um but I just never tried it I just was like it smells awful I just okay. I, I don't know I was so close-minded about it and I kick myself in the ass every day because like seven months ago eight months ago I tried an old-fashioned I don't know what happened I was at a bar and I was like I want an old-fashioned and is that embarrassing this so girl embarrassing. it was so embarrassing this girl that I I grew up working with was like guys I think it's really hot when you drink an old-fashioned and I was like I'm not gonna drink an old-fashioned and make a <gasps> guy impressed like I was so that I think that was also something as well <laughs> sorry I just made my I know throat. that was you vomiting <laughs> over there <laughs> I'm sorry if anybody didn't get that <laughs> was the noise that I made <laughs> And I, I was like, girl, I was like, what the fuck? That's so stupid. Drink what you want. And then I drank it and I was like, this is amazing. And it like, because I'm so used to drinking wine, it just gave me like a different, like relaxed. Different vibe. Different vibe. Yeah. And I'm a big fan now. Okay. I like that. All yeah. Right. Well, I brought you your gift, which is. Uh, I should have opened it. Is that rude that I didn't open it? No, it's not Do rude I, at all. I just, I, I want you to be excited about I'm it. I'm really excited. Because it's a wine cask bourbon. Oh my god, fun! Yeah, so Thank you'll you you'll so maybe you'll enjoy that in your old fashioned later. I'm really excited, yeah. and so you gotta have it. the cherries. Well, of course. I had friends over um, over the weekend. We had a drink before we went out, and I was like, "I have, I can make you an old fashioned." And he's like, "Okay, cool." And I made him one. He's like, 
well, you got money. And I was like, what do you, I mean, I don't. But Did you have Aristino what are you talking cherries? About? You had the good cherries? He's like, you got the cherries. And I was like, you can't. I have to tell I you didn't have the orange. Like, that's something I can still have an old fashioned with. And I, I didn't have an orange. I got to tell you. You got to have story. the cherries. Tell me. All right. So this, this requires a little bit of like Background? understanding of like okay. my family and okay. the dynamics, right? So I have uh, my uncle, Aunt. Antonio Anthony, uh, he is a little bit of a prankster, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a little bit of like a sarcastic individual. Um, and he had asked me, so my when my grandfather really enjoyed Manhattan's, and that was like never so much in terms of like we we weren't like a big like cocktail family. We were very much like a wine family as Italians, like big into wine. Okay, um, but in our kind of excitement of all things having to do with like celebrations of holidays and whatnot, like Christmas we would have a Manhattan, and that was, like, kind of the go-to. Okay. And so it kind of became the the family staple. It was like, all right, we're going to enjoy a nice little Manhattan at the end of, you know, our, our little Feast of the Seven Fishes and da-da-da-da. A Feast of Seven Fishes? Oh, yeah. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah. This is, like, a Neapolitan Christmas tradition. Whoa. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, absolutely. And wow. so <laughs> my uncle was like, all right. I'm going to go and, like, you know, you're the bartender, so you make, like, what do I need to bring? Are you annoyed about that, to make drinks for No, 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 I love okay. it. I think it's great. Okay. Uh, so he says to me, he's like, hey, I need you to, like, you know, let me know what ingredients you need for, you know, the whole scenario. I'm like, okay, get a good bottle of bourbon, you need this vermouth, you need these cherries. And so it's like the Luxardo, you know, little yeah. maraschino cherries. And we show up, and usually... <laughs> You know, on, like, the kitchen island, right? There's, like, kind of this whole feast of snacks. Yeah. And he's, like, one jar of cherries in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm, like, what the fuck is going on? Right? And he's, like, well, I had to tell you a story. <laughs> he's, like, so I go. And now, mind you, he lives in, like, a relatively bougie area. So he's probably, like, paying a premium on anything else, yeah. right? <laughs> so he's, like, yeah, well, and he's telling this story, like, real dry. He goes, well... I go to the store, I go to I pick up, you know, whatever I need. I get the whiskey, I get the, you know, vermouth, and I grab my little jar of cherries. And it's like, no shit, like, it's like teeny tiny, tiny right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I grab my little jar of cherries. And he's like, goes up, pays up, and then, you know, the wonderful clerk is like, that'll be like, you know, I don't know, a $100. <laughs> and he's like... Nope. He kind of does one of those things where he's like, yes, I definitely know the cost of cherries. I knew it was going to be Yes, weird. this is not weird to me at all. Yeah. <laughs> and like, pays up and leaves. And then rides this joke of a wave for the entire time that we are all together. And still to this day, years later, will not let it die. That he's like, I still have the cherries because I really got to get my <laughs> return on investment here. And like, wouldn't let it fucking die. I that get it. I do too. But he's like... Yes, yes, I definitely know the cost of cherries. <laughs> yes, this seems totally reasonable. And he's he's like, like, I'm not going to so, be embarrassed at yeah, this Yeah, no, cashier. no. I mean, what are you going to do at that point? You're just like, uh, yeah, here's all of my money. My kid doesn't need to go to school. That's totally fine. I definitely wanted cherries instead of, you know, education. And yeah. he's like, so everybody just got fucking cherries instead of... That's the feast. This is it. Nobody's getting snacks. We're Eat getting cherries. cherries. Because this is what we want. Oh, my God. Best cherries he's ever they had. They have to be. They everyone. have to be. And so this became like kind of the constant joke of our family was like the cherries for Manhattan's have to be. Yeah. This. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't I think he's still know. riding the same jar like 10 years later. As he should. I 100%. didn't know. Like, I, of course, another expensive. But I just didn't know <laughs> how are you going to make an old fashioned without him. I mean, you can't. Right. Yeah. Like, I just, it wasn't an option for but me. But even worse is like... For an old-fashioned, sure, but it's just a garnish <laughs> in a Manhattan. Right. That's the worst part is he's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one, like, one cherry. It. He's like, this does not make any sense. It's like 10 cherries in but total. he loved it. I don't know if he did. He did. <laughs> I think maybe he did. Maybe he was over it after the cost. Oh, he might have been yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, I get it. He's like, you okay. got money. And I was but like, how are you feeling about all of your whiskey now? Like, I mean... Um, I need You're to in the old-fashioned world. I'm in the old-fashioned world. I started off, um, oh my gosh, I don't even know. I think I, the first thing I just bought myself was Bullet. I was like, I'll just do Bullet. <laughs> oh, well. No. I'm only doing that because they're homophobia. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, Are they? That's it. Yeah. It's a Who owns Bullet? Uh, 
there's the Bullet family. Right. So um, are and you I, I'm not about saying the whole this. family then? No, 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 I'm not saying this about the liquid. I'm not saying it's about anything like that. It's more of a, this is a public knowledge thing. Okay, like a Chick-fil-A um, situation. Very much, yes. Okay. I'm against cancel culture. As am I. Okay. I don't, I don't think that you should just be like, I saw something online and yeah. all of a sudden I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah, but do your research and support other brands Correct. that have Correct. views that you think are better and align with, for and sure. here's the thing. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be wonderful. Oh, right? of, like, and yeah. probably the people that seem really wonderful just don't let their dirty laundry air out. Sure, sure. But at least you can feel confident about what you're buying. Yeah. One of my friends... My, my thumbs down is more for, like, obviously homophobia, but also, like, yeah. it's yucky. I don't like it. Yeah, well, I now that I've tried other brands, yeah. I also don't really go for a bullet ride but on the thing of cancel i didn't culture, pay her to say that just so no knows. she didn't i did not pay her to say um that. my f- i actually used to have a co-host in season one of the podcast uh carolyn like brought up this great point and she said i think was it i don't know a nike thing or something like let's just use the the tart let's use the balenciaga um you know the kid uh photo oh, shoot geez. which was yeah so offensive and terrible and people are like which throwing... i've only recently found out about oh really yeah. you live under a rock which rock do you live under a big one apparently <laughs> it's the biggest that you could possibly find i i need you to know i am like an 80 year old man like i know nothing about pop culture oh okay like i've i've only discovered do you this... know about the titanic situation yes last i week? do and that's not I, pop culture it's, it's not pop culture but it's also like i also love celine dion so anything that has to do with of course titanic i'm there for my heart will go on of my course. heart will go on let me tell you <laughs> theirs will not that i was drove terrible. all night oh my god that was terrible <laughs> that was terrible i have to go now <laughs> no no this is it no this i'm gonna it. get canceled no um, you don't believe in it so it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> you won't touch me yeah. but she was like how are these people gonna cancel balenciaga sure take take all your stuff your shoes out throw them away sure guess who owns balenciaga all of the people who own like Gucci, blah, 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 blah. She's like, so let me see you take all those out. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. love that you don't want to wear that and support that anymore. Donate, sell it and donate it to charity or something like that. Monopoly rules in terms of business do not exist internationally. Absolutely. That is the problem. That is the problem. <laughs> yeah. So wait, what did we get on? Oh, Bullet Rise started. Blah, we're not drinking that yep. anymore. I just had, um, oh God, I just emptied it. I don't even know what it was. Um. Something double barrel, something, something. I don't know. Oh, yes. The something, something double yes. barrel. Yes. I'm yes. familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, that's it's very familiar to everybody. Yes, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> something Walker, not Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm really hoping you're going to uh, know No, this. I, I want you to float here on your own little island of whatever the hell you're doing over there. <laughs> Okay. So it's like be a bad like guest like guest host or whatever the hell this is like to be like eh, good luck over there like, I good got luck nothing. everybody else Sinka you haven't said no. much do you have an answer for me I, I, you're I so you were, bad at Google I, I, I that's you, what I'm understanding about you with it. I don't know. I haven't anything I haven't anything to Google so you know yeah, I mean I had like, it open here. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, can you Google double, double, barrel, of boil, and trouble, or whatever the fuck it was that she just said? I'll need a minute. <laughs> I don't know, whatever potion she's looking up. I don't know what she's looking up. I'm going to look at my trash can after this so I can tell you the name of it, because now it's going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, off. she does not recycle. I do not. Does it actually recycle? Do no, we? this I thought is like a... Recycle. <clears throat> I do boxes. I break down a box and I put it in the green can. There you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's a start. All right. Yeah. No. Well done. Okay. I break down a box and I put it in a green can. All right. Yeah. You do whatever you want. That sounds great. Yeah. Good job, buddy. I'm really proud of you. But- <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. All right. Yeah. She's like, but uh, just in case you're wondering, I'm going to burn all the fossil fuels and um, fuck anybody that has plastic waste. I don't care about them doesn't matter i live I in just, texas I just, I do, <laughs> doesn't matter i do totally sound like a texan yeah you're like hey welcome to texas i don't uh, care about nothing i'll break down yeah. a box or two. black label no, no. <laughs> <laughs> incorrect we're done here. can you do me a favor and just do it over we're there done, with your, we're done here <laughs> yeah do me a favor i actually don't have any confidence that what she has said is what that it bottle will, actually is yeah so, you're not picking up on anything right 
No, no. you and her I'm are not the very same smart. Boat. I'm no. over here on the fucking submarine sinking down to the Titanic. You're not sinking. You're I'm sinking. Drowning yourself. <laughs> <laughs> They are. Yeah, they did. Okay, got it. Got to get right, off okay, the title. Right, right. It's terrible. <laughs> no, we're not doing um, that. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about whiskey. Do you have anything else you want to say about whiskey, <sighs> girl? But I'm gonna I'm gonna edit in at the end the name. Is of Jim that Beam bottle. still cheap? Hmm. Is like the container of Jim Beam still cheap? Can you not say the word cheap? <laughs> well, I say Maybe. cheap. I see cheap as in a good way. You're like inexpensive. Is it still a value price? Uh, efficiently. Uh, Oh, um, see, in my mind, cheap is a good thing. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'll tell you this. Because right, so the this only is... reason I say that is because we that's what me and my friends always used to get. You know what I mean? We, start, <laughs> we used to always I'm going to tell get... you this. I'm going to say this. Because like, I, I do think that that's a good starting point to a, a conversation. So I will say this. I think that a lot of folks kind of have this vision of like Jim Beam being either their granddad's whiskey, right? Like something that just like exists because it's kind of this ubiquitous brand. Been making whiskey for two hundred and twenty eight years, right? Mm-hmm. It's been a long fucking time. Trustworthy must be doing something yeah, right. I think doing people think right. that about wild turkey. I don't think I didn't think that about Jim Bean because we used to drink that shit all the time. Like same. I mean, they're both I'd heritage still brands, drink it. right? They're both yeah. wonderful heritage brands, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with either one of them. Like they're just different, right? Uh, and I think what ends up happening is folks think about Jim Beam as the white label. They think like, oh, it's a mixer, hmm. right? It has a function, it has a purpose, but like we make more than that. And I think that's an important thing to talk about too. Like we make Basil Hayden, we make Knob Creek, we make Bookers, we make Bakers, now Claremont Steep. And like we've seen the new brands kind of coming out, but like yeah. even Basil Hayden, Knob Creek, Bookers, and Bakers have been out for 31 years. <laughs> like we've been okay. making them for a long time. Um, and when people talk about bourbon in general, like, they lean towards brands that have really heavy marketing behind okay. them, right? Like you had mentioned Bullet before. Bullet doesn't have a distillery, mm. right? Like it's got great marketing behind it and somebody makes that whiskey really well. Yeah. But they don't have a distillery that you can go and visit. And so I think there's kind of a distinction between that. So it's almost a really good setup for you to like bring that up in terms of that branding and like yeah. not to bring it into like a whole bourbon conversation or whiskey conversation, but like – it's kind of an interesting, no, interesting. thing yeah. to think about, like, when folks are looking at a back bar and they go, I recognize this brand, Bullet or Wild Turkey or Jim Beam or mm. whatever it is, there's a connotation. There's, like, sort of this mental click that happens for folks to think about whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And I think because of the ubiquity, kind of the familiarity, whatever it is that happens with Jim Beam, people are like, oh, I've seen it. I don't know if I've had it, but I know what it is. Yeah. It's, it's like, but do you? Well, to me, like, if I saw Jim Beam, I guess maybe because I've experienced pouring it as a sure. bartender, I would think it's like a, like a good, trustworthy, like, I'm going to like that. Yeah. Because I've seen it a lot type of thing. Probably the same thing with Bullet. Like, I had never tried it, but I was like, I've sure, seen that. Sure. I'm going to pick that up in the store. A lot of brands start like that. You got, you know, Svetka, Amsterdam, they all started that way. Then you get P. Diddy with Ciroc. Nobody, yeah. Ciroc's been out forever, but nobody started drinking it until P. Diddy started Yeah, and then you, you get, like, it, the you know, so. kind of celebrity endorsements, which is its own conversation, right, mm-hmm. about, like, how that works, where it's, like, a brand becomes famous because of or in addition to a celebrity endorsement. And, like, right. for the most part, we really haven't really dealt with that. Like, the only celebrity endorsement we ever really yeah, had was... Started from the bottom, true. now we're here. I mean, That's we had Mila true, Kunis yeah. with, like, our devil's cut, but that was about it. Like, we didn't really have anything else. And, like, have been doing it for, again, 228 years of making whiskey. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool thing to celebrate and to do that. Right. What does determine, or do you know the answer to this question, what does determine, why do restaurants pick the well whiskey? Is it because it's the cheapest, um, you know, wholesale? Or is it because it's... Maybe several reasons go into that. Um, I mean, it depends on their business model, right? Like, um, you can your well can operate in a couple of different ways. Like, I've run bars that the well is the cheapest, mm-hmm. but it's just important to have that be cost effective, and that is that, right? So it's like an eight dollar bottle to us, <laughs> right? And a five dollar charge to you, mm-hmm. right? That's it, and so we're just making money on that. The other part of that is like you can also have accounts. And bars where maybe, like, if I call for a bourbon and Coke, it might be the well is something of a decent standard, 
Jim Beam Black, for example, or Jim Beam White or whatever, right? right? Like where I'm not going to be mad about it. It's going to be good. Right. And I can have a good cocktail. And that's kind of why I'm asking is because when I go to a restaurant and they say, do you have a preference? I normally say, not because I'm looking to spend less money, but I also maybe I don't want to ask about other options. I just sure. say, I'll take the well. Yeah, whatever the well is. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you can you can tell based on where you are located, right? Like kind of and you're looking at the menu and yeah. that sort of thing. Like if the well is going to be whatever is cheap, right? Plastic bottle cheap or like, uh, consciously inexpensive and I think that that's a difference yeah it's like what's the conscious choice for a a cocktail that I can say like hey I want to make an old-fashioned and I'm going to make a hundred of them tonight what is going to be cost effective for our business mm -hmm. and for the guest mm -hmm. right like what how does that translate because if I have a $60 bottle of booze that is not cost effective to my guest but if I have a $25 bottle of booze that might be a little bit more cost effective right so I would say that's kind of a – depends on the business, depends okay. on their model. Um, but I think most people are leaning towards riding that middle wave of it's cost-effective for us to make that, like, bourbon and Coke, that vodka soda, that gin and tonic, whatever it mm -hmm. is, like that quick mix drink. But also can – those spirits can also be – appropriately put into classic cocktails okay so if you order the old-fashioned you order a manhattan yeah you can use them for both you can kind of yeah it's like utilitarian for, for that sense yeah and that's always how i i ran my bar programs was that okay i learned yeah. something here today here we freaking go here we go you learned something here today he, yeah, he learned am. that i like adidas <laughs> no I'm just oh kidding. are you an adidas oh no adidas i would fan? never say that oh, to you I gotcha. uh, no because i don't want to fight you in a parking lot <laughs> or wearing all of your nike what are your thoughts on limeritas Sorry, what did you say? Can't hear you. I'm trying to enjoy myself. What are, what are your thoughts on Limeritas? I can't hear you. I'm trying to enjoy myself. <laughs> Answer carefully because the East Siders out there will probably mm. get angry. Mm. Well, she's not. She's only been not in Houston for a year. She not doesn't even here. know what that means. No, I know nothing. What, a Limerita? The Limerita or the East Siders? Mm -mm. I don't know anything. Let her know. Oh, so Limerita is basically, you know, something you get at the gas station mm. whenever, you know, you just don't feel like going uh, out anywhere Is it sponsored by Nike? Why are you bringing it up? <laughs> Well, we were talking about alcoholic beverages, so mm. I figured I'd bring lime because okay. that's a popular drink on the east side. <laughs> and so, he always you know. says, um, he yeah. always says, well, you catch like, me where can we find you? Like, what's your Instagram handle? He's always like, catch me down, stumbling down Washington Boulevard with a lime -arita. I'm like, can you mm. not drink a <laughs> Buy me a beer. So it's a can. <laughs> Buy me beer, he says. <laughs> so it's a canned huh? drink? It's a canned yeah, drink? Yeah, it's a canned drink. You don't feel like huh. going outside in public. It's like a Four loco, or? There you go disgusting yeah but it's and not a, it's not as bad. beverage yeah wow. gas station beverage do you, you get know. one of those hot dogs that are five days you old go too? in you want to avoid the hot dogs but you go in you could probably g grab like a wrapped taco or something like that a wrapped taco um oh a wrapped taco yeah like a okay. taco or something like that if they okay. got them um, go in there you grab you two or three lime readers you and your boys just I'm throw them back in the car you. I'm worried yeah, about so. you. I've only just met you. I'm, I'm glad you can worried, see so. that. You've only known him for a minute. Yeah, I'm a little worried about yeah. you. I mean, that's behind me now. I mean, now I'm drinking like, you know, Crown, <laughs> Crown and Coke. So. Yeah, we're going to work on that, too. Yeah, we're going to work yeah. on that. I mean, I'll, I would drink. I'll If I don't have nothing to do for the next three days, I'll go back to drinking bourbon. Absolutely. It affects you like that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What is oh. it between the small ratio of rye versus corn that really messes with you? Maybe I don't know. allergic. Never thought about that, but I think it's I, all like a placebo effect. I think you're just lying to me. No, it hurts. It hurts. Is you it know? the quantity in which you are drinking? <laughs> that probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah, it has a lot to do. Yeah, you okay. know what we do is like if we know we don't have to like if we have a couple of days off, and we, like me and my boy will go out. First thing yeah. we're doing, we're getting two shots of um, um, Irish whiskey. Okay. Just to you know, get right really quick. Hmm, yeah. And then with the Lord. <laughs> right get right with the lord the really lord. quick yeah uh -huh, say uh -huh, quick uh -huh. prayer yeah you know what i'm saying okay. and then uh yeah you get the uh the casual the sipper mm -hmm, the crown and mm -hmm, coat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're from the east side so we just keep it basic okay yeah um and yeah and then you know if you're like three or four drinks in you know you're kind of like wasted you switch to the beer typically you know what if I'm you're saying? wasted just, you stop yeah, so yeah. it has nothing yeah, to do to. with the actual spirit and has everything to do with your continuation of drinking is what right, you're telling right, me. Right, yeah. And that is why. <laughs> That's where the problem is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm saying about, is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm here to There's enlighten to you. Oh my God. But that's a night. That's that's a night for me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So shots, switch to the drink, to the beer. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you're like very efficient. You're like, we're starting the night with shots. You have to. You have to because we're getting there probably like at midnight. You got two hours yeah, left. Yeah, they also 
don't go out they him and his friend that that i know who you're talking why about why don't you go out they don't go out till 12 like i'll be out i'm like it's 10 i'm like where are you at i'm on washington which i never am want to come out and he's like yeah i'll be there around midnight midnight what, 30. what are you doing between like 9 30 and midnight you just chilling. You just listening to music, drinking, probably at the house pre. Oh, so you're drinking bit. me? Okay, so this is the thing. <laughs> so here's the thing. Like you cannot yeah. blame whatever is happening from midnight on. <laughs> yeah. If you were sitting there and just saying like, "Oh yeah, no, we're just like pre game. We're just like you know drinking other stuff. Like yeah, yeah totally fine." Like no, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm gonna uh, halt it. that real fast. <laughs> you don't yeah. think about it. Like you don't think about it till you actually get to the establishment. Then you're like, "Okay, I do, I do." Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We yeah, don't, so, so I, um. I don't believe anything that you're saying anymore. And I, <laughs> yeah. re, I'm going to rescind all credibility from all the things that you have said. No, there's what, no what trust. Time, what time do you go out? I go out at 7 p.m. and I'm home by 10. <laughs> yes, like, love that night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I really do love that night. I yeah, that kind of night in bed. Yeah, by. and if I'm if I'm out like past midnight and you see me ordering like an espresso martini, be like, get in the car. Yeah, go oh, home. Like, been out go home. Yeah. <laughs> no can, business. No business hold. with the caffeine. Yeah, no. I can hold my alcohol pretty well. Like, I can actually go out and I can party yes. and I can last until two or three if I decide yeah, to. Yeah, you've been out but, with us for like yeah, a, a good like, amount of time. Yeah, but like, I drink water um, and I don't get Like hammered. an adult. Yeah. And you typically yeah. won't really know that I'm drunk. Hmm. Yeah, okay. it's really... All right, well, let's, let's have good, this conversation. Okay. What does your drunk tell? What do you think is your drunk tell? It's a different conversation. Because this is like, I think this is different for everybody. It's Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. God, I don't know what my drunk tell is because I don't, all of my friends will say like, Paige can drink a lot. Like you kind of can't tell. I'm going to ask them this question. What is my drunk tell? What is your drunk tell? Because I don't. You don't stumble. Know. You don't start talking sporadically in the restroom to other females and taking pictures. I do that. Because that's like a good sober. one. Like you start talking to strangers. I do right? that completely sober. That's also true. I mean, I'm just sitting here right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Talk, we started talking about ASMR porn. I would do that immediately in a restroom. I would do that. Okay. I've yeah. gotten people's numbers and I've actually hung out with people that I've met in a bar bathroom. You've done that sober. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And drunk, and then I do hang out with them. I don't know. I'm gonna have to investigate. Okay. Um, maybe I get a little sensitive. Do you cry? I think that's it. No. I think that's it. Okay. It's been a while. Probably like okay. five to seven years that I've cried from being Ever? drunk. <laughs> I haven't done that like, like in you've five never years. cried in five years. No, no, I cry all the time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was like, big, girl, big. I was crier. like, shut the camera off. We need to talk. <laughs> Are you okay? No, I cry a lot. Okay, but being drunk out at a bar, like okay. over a fight or a boy, I would. Okay, over being drunk, it's probably been at least five years. Okay, so you, that's but I would that's say I probably get a little sensitive. That would probably be my tell. Okay. A little drama, maybe. No, okay, no, no drama. No drama. Oh, just sensitive and just, sensitive, just quiet just like kind of quiet and like maybe i got my feelings hurt because somebody might have looked at me like a little and off. thought i was drunk maybe like, someone uh. could find out that i was drunk and i was like oh, I'm so no, sad no i'm sad now okay. i go home all right yeah probably what about you what's, what's your drunk though <laughs> um i get real quiet because in my head i'm like nobody can know i'm drunk <laughs> so if i just become a stone so <laughs> yeah i sit there and i'm like hmm Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody can see me. Nobody knows. And that's like out and about. Like if I get really quiet when I'm out and about, like mm -hmm. I'm like, I just don't want to, I don't want to slur my words. I don't yeah. want people to know. Okay. And it, it doesn't happen often. Like I'm usually very good at regulating myself and being like, okay, I'm going to go to bed. I'm yeah. going to like drink water. I'm going to like, you know, correct myself. But if I do get to that point where I'm like, oh, this was a little too far. Yeah. And it happens, right? Like I'm like, mm -hmm. Don't talk to anybody. <laughs> don't say anything it's, you're going to regret. It's miserable. Don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and I like shut down. Yeah. And not in like a weird way, but I'm just like. <laughs> I think I can kind of identify with yeah. that too. Probably. And then it just depends on what I'm drinking too. It makes me feel If I'm different. in your house or if I'm in my house, I'm going to start cleaning. <laughs> really? Cleaning is my drunk tell. Like my thing is like I will immediately be like, I got to do these dishes. There is nothing more important than cleaning these dishes. No. Because I want to set myself up for success yeah. <laughs> the next day. So I'm I like, do love that feeling. oh, girl, I got to do that laundry. I got to clean those dishes. I got to sweep that floor. And you'll just like leave the party and start doing that And I will start stuff. doing it. Wow. Like, I will clean your dishes. I will sweep <laughs> your floor. Come on over. I, I know, love like, this. That's the thing. Like, that's how I know I'm in trouble is I'm in somebody yeah. else's house and I'm like, put the sponge down. <laughs> you need to call it. See, I do that anyway, so that wouldn't be no, my tell. No, no, it's, it's bad. Hmm. Like, usually I'm like, okay, I can shut this off and be like, all right, I'm going to see myself out. 
Yeah. Yeah. But if I am a drunky monkey, I am like, oh. So okay. if you go like Bottle Blonde and she's just like cleaning tables and just Oh yeah, if I start like doing stuff, some like, dishes oh. at Bottle Blonde, you should send Either me Either she works home. here or she's like... You should send me like, home. Or you start like giving advice to the bartenders about like what they're pouring. Oh, not that. No, I will never do that. Never ever. Did you see, uh, my face was really hopeful that you were going to say you never do that. I was like, I hope you don't. Yeah, do you're that. like... With my eyes, I was like, please, <laughs> wink, wink, yeah, wink, nod, wink, nod. Please tell me no. <laughs> no, I will never do that. No, oh, God, no. Y'all's tails are really like subtle and nice well, sounding. We're respectable, we're respectable people. Yeah, mine's yeah. you can, uh, you can. It's very obvious. Oh uh, yeah, your drunk tail is walking into a bar with yeah, ordering you, two fucking shots like a psycho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what your drunk tail is. <laughs> or you see me stumbling. With that the means that you've been drinking or, you know, at home. Yeah. And now I already exactly. know. You this. can probably hear it in my speech too. I'm like, yeah, bro, those those fucking oxtail prices. Like, what do you oh, think about them? So Crazy. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> oh god okay we're gonna stop are you hammered right now because you're talking about oxtails <laughs> oh, no, no, okay we're gonna move on <laughs> i didn't have that much wine <laughs> we're gonna like, move I only on. had eight bottles of wine i'm fine <laughs> i was only pre-gaming before i got here yeah he's like um, do you have any irish whiskey shots like that's what he's doing right now no that would be nice uh jameson i will never have jameson ever again in my life it fucked me up it fucked me up one night um, where I almost got fired from my job. My that's your that's job. your spirit that you can't drink anymore. Can't drink, won't drink it. Okay, cannot do it. All right, interesting. Yeah, I it was at a work Christmas party, and I went home. Thankfully, someone took me home, and I did not drive. And I puked in the bushes, and it was St. Patrick's Day, mm. and I was wearing all St. Patrick's garb, you know, mm. like a shot glass and. Uh, little yeah, bows. you're obnoxious. Yeah. And I was living with my sister and her kids, mm-hmm. and they woke up the next morning and really, truly thought that um, the leprechauns had come because my little trinkets were on the way to the bathroom where my sister had to undress me because I was covered in puke. But like the little shot glass. That's so she, hot. Can yeah. you describe it in detail? Right? Right? <laughs> wow. Stop flirting with me. <laughs> my word. Man, my niece came out with the shot glass. I didn't know this was glass. a flirty podcast. Oh, it is. It is. My niece came out with the <laughs> shot glass on a necklace and said, Mom, the leprechaun left his coffee cup here. Like, and oh, no. Sorry. That's drunk auntie. It's got to go. drunk auntie. So I can't. I've sworn that off. But anyway, we're moving on from alcohol. Yeah, we're out of here. And now we're going to be talking about dating. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So you moved from Boston. You've been here in Houston for a year. Mm-hmm. May I ask, is it appropriate um, for someone or should I ask what you prefer? Like, are you, you've mentioned girls. I obviously mm-hmm. know that from the nightcap. Are yeah. you queer? Are you, what's lesbian? Um, I would say I identify more as I, I, as a lesbian, right? Like a, like WLW, woman loving woman, right? Okay. Um, but I would say I, queer is not off you know off the mark um okay. and is it okay like is that appropriate for someone to ask i guess probably everyone has different preferences but yeah i think it's actually important to ask okay. like what people's preferences are i think okay. the same as like pronouns yeah. and like things like that like important to have that conversation um for me i think like i've been out since i was like 13 okay so it's been a long time for me and like yeah. lesbian was like the thing like i didn't really have like queer as an identity right. and now that queer becomes a bit more uh, ubiquitous in the way that we approach identity is really cool and that kind of covers a little bit more of the spectrum. Um, I don't have any issue with that okay. as a kind of identifier and I'm here for that. Okay, <laughs> and it's perfect. pretty cool. Cool. Okay, so that's appropriate, <laughs> yes. Okay, so <clears throat> you've uh, been out since you were 13. Correct. And coming from Boston to Houston, what is the difference in the dating scene as far as you um you kind of mentioned it earlier, off air. Boston's a little bit more liberal than here in Houston, Texas. Yeah, we're in Texas. Well, Texas um, now. I mean, I, I'm going to say this. Like, I think that Boston is a little bit more liberal in terms of that because it's just like up in New England, right? Mm-hmm. And it kind of has this air of being a little bit more open. And that is not a to blanket statement any place because I course. do think like you know just disclaimer of like you know kind of people and places and da, 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 da. Yeah. i don't want to like do a world view on somebody but uh moving here i was i was a little nervous because i was like oh shit like i'm living in texas as like an out and proud queer person and, and like a lesbian in this place and a public facing one nonetheless like that's yeah. kind of a its own beast um and i will say has been met with Excellent reception. Like, okay. I've not found anybody who has been overtly rude or dismissive or violent or anything. And I know that that's a very privileged 
place to be. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm certainly not saying that that's everybody's experience, but that has been mine thus far. Okay, um, great. And so, like, in dating, it's been very interesting because, you know, I moved here and I got, like, on the apps. Right. Because I was like, I have no fucking idea. That's a good way idea. to start for Well, yeah, you don't know what it's like, yeah. you know? And if you look at, like, kind of how – and correct me if I'm wrong, you identify as straight, yeah? Yes. Okay, so like you walk into a bar and you can feel like, all right, I can walk up to probably any dude in this room and be like, I'm hitting on you. And there's not really a whole lot of risk outside of like, oh, you might be in a relationship. Yeah. Right? Like, and the risk is that. Yeah. Versus on the other end, like walking up if you were at a bar and I was like, oh, hey girl, like, and I walk up to you and yeah. I start hitting on you, like there's a little bit more of a risk associated with that. Because I don't know how you identify and I don't know how the folks around you identify right. and I don't know like kind of the safety network behind that. And so jumping on apps seemed to be like kind of the safest way to go about it uh, where it was like kind of see what the community looks like, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, And the community seemed to be pretty strong, like not crazy, but like pretty strong in, in kind of its convictions and that sort of thing. And like... Okay. Started dating somebody, um, we broke up, and then, like, started doing the whole dating thing again. Okay. And it's really cool to kind of see... So you're still, like, open to meeting people in... Or maybe before, I'm not sure where you stand, really. But, like, meeting people in public and on the apps still kind of thing. Yeah, I I mean, I probably get myself into trouble for a lot of this, but, like, I've, I've been out, like I said, since I was 13. So, yeah. like, I'm not trying to hide myself. And I know that might be a dangerous statement, and I know it's a privileged thing to say that I can be in spaces and own that you yeah. know and I, I find myself in, in very proud and open spaces and I'm, I celebrate them um and I would love for that to be the norm for everybody, for everybody. and uh, I get that that's not um I'm also like a pretty um I guess like femme presenting person which mm -hmm. is its own conversation for another side yeah. of the podcast that we can do but like that being said like walking into a space and being like oh you are not like oh, that's a fucking lesbian right there. Like, that is a very safe space to be in to present the way that I present. And I know that that is its own conversation. Definitely its own um, conversation. I think it's important that, obviously, you're acknowledging that it is a privilege. Um, but, I mean, the fact that you're still proud of who you are and yeah. willing to be out and proud and... I have no problem walking yeah. in, holding somebody's hand, and kissing someone on the mouth, and being like, "Hey, guess what? Like, As I am here. Yeah. We are occupying this space. Fucking get over it. Like, yeah. that is a really cool thing to do. I tend to date more like femme presenting women as well. So, okay. like, that ends up being its own weirdness when we walk into places because it's like, oh, look at these ladies, and it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna take each other home." <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Like, we're good over here. Yeah, we're good over here. And, like, there's been a couple of, like, hilarious instances, like, recently where it's, like, I'll be on a date and it's, like, this dude will walk over and be, like, hey, I really like your tattoos. Not about me. Like, about my date. Oh, <laughs> I'm, like, okay. I'm, like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, Have fun, me too. bro. No, I'll be, like, yeah, man, aren't they great? Like, <laughs> I'll be the <laughs> asshole. I'm, like, like, fueling the fire. And I'm, like, aren't they really cool? <laughs> Well, she's so great. Fun. Ask for a number. Oh my god, you guys should definitely hang out. <laughs> like I'm the asshole who does it because I think it's hilarious. It is. It is. Okay. Where it's like just read the fucking social cues, man. <laughs> like mm, people, people don't. I know. People don't know I they know. can't. I'm not sure. I know. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, I just watched. I feel like as stupid as reality TV can be, I did. I do feel like I got a little bit more educated on um, the queer community by watching The Ultimatum on Netflix. Sure. Um, like I would never have known to say femme presenting, but they, oh, sure. and so I just recently heard that term and then you said it, which was affirming. Um, good job learning. I'm so proud. Thank of you. you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. And I'm very progressive and open to yeah. that, like, of course, but I was like, oh, that's a good new term to use. I guess, I guess I knew that maybe what is the term for non-femme presenting? Like is mask it, presenting? Mas like masculine? Like, right. Okay. Yeah. I think I knew that, but I didn't yeah. know that there was ever a, uh, I think you like, know what it's it usually is? more like you butch. Know? You know usually. what I and actually I'm going to ask you this question. I'm putting, boop? I'm putting boop. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting myself out there by asking is a lipstick lesbian. Is that a terrible term? No, That's I think that I've it's an older it term. I think it might be like a little bit more outdated. And I'm it's like, because you're now talking about. So hold on. I, yeah. I, you continue what you're saying about. I presume you're talking about like ultimatum and like all that. Right. So 
Yeah, let's chat there, and then I'll tell you about like more about my kind of uh, entrance into pop culture in the lesbian world. Okay. Well, Cuz I think that's important with like the lipstick lesbian versus butch and all of that. Yeah, okay. I agree. Um the ultimatum, I finished it. I'm not going to blow it for you no cuz she has K hasn't finished it and whoever's listening not going to blow it. But I thought it was really interesting. Obviously, I think this is the second season. The first one was um heterosexual mm-hmm. relationships and that was great great uh, i love reality tv so very entertaining very just trashy terrible i mean yeah how, you can't not look away um but i thought it was really interesting a few things one thing i never thought of and i hope it's okay that i'm asking please say no sure. but there is a couple who you know they date different end up like temporarily mar- marrying other people and they one of the couples had intercourse mm-hmm and they told their, they called their other partner and were like, I had intercourse. And I never thought of what intercourse meant for a same sex couple. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And she was like, um, I mean, to two different people, that means different things. Yeah. That could be just penetration. That could sure. be oral. That could be. So is that just up to, as a whole, is that just up to the two people in the relationship to decide what that means? I guess. Let me ask you the same question, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess it for would be me, the same. For me, intercourse is penetration with a penis. Sure. And so, yeah, I think that's... And so I guess that's my question back would be that answer of like, okay, how do you define that? Like, if you go down on someone, if someone goes down on you, if you like blow someone, if it's like that conversation. Oral. Like, yeah. So is oral a, a cheating act? Definitely. Is... Oh, no, it's definitely cheating. Oh, for sure. Oh, you're talking about like sex I'm talking in about general. How do, you cl- how do you classify intercourse? Um, is it I would up to say the couple's perspective? anything having to do with genitals. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> okay. like, I mean, at this point, I feel like, yeah. Like, if we're in a scenario where it's like, all right, are you like doing like a, a fingering scenario with like penetration that's its own thing if it's not it's still like i don't care it's like at that point you're being like well we dry humped so it doesn't count right like, no it still fucking okay. counts okay like it's still sex it's still intercourse to that extent um but i think when you have the penetration conversation then it becomes a little bit more heteronormative mm-hmm. than it might need to be if okay. that makes sense like I think when we talk about sex, we talk about intercourse in general, a lot of people are like, well, it was penetration, so it counts. That's not everybody's version of sex and of intercourse, to your point. So. Even a hetero. Even in, like, a hetero relationship, right? Like, if you aren't into it, maybe you don't get off that way. Maybe that's not something that you're into. Maybe you're with somebody who doesn't have the capacity to get it up. Yeah. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe your version of intercourse is not that. And so... Whoa, you are blowing my mind. I know. Yeah. There it is. Like, maybe your version Learning. of intercourse is not that, but you're in a heterosexual relationship. Okay. So that is its own dynamic. And so I think when we have the conversation of what intercourse actually looks like, it's very different couple to couple, person to person. I'm super happy we're having this conversation because I would never like for me having sex with a man intercourse is penis in my vagina. Okay. So but, would you consider personal question yeah. like if somebody's just like all right we're like fooling around on the couch and it's like a like hands only scenario and like this person fingers you is that a to me, intercourse? It's not intercourse. That's solely just like a foreplay. foreplay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that's like that could be wildly different to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. It means you got to count it as a body. It means you got a lot more bodies you need to count. <laughs> so. I'm not also counting those that. as bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you that so you real know. quick, fast, <laughs> and immediately, oh, my damn, friend. Like, if you, yeah, if no, you thought your body count, count where it was, where it was at, <laughs> think again. So go, what's it? your body count? <laughs> Somewhere up there, I don't know. Somewhere up there, I would literally. I'm Wait, no, I don't even... know. What do you What do you think your body count is? He will not I have ever no answer idea. that. I mean, I would, but I would have to sit back and think about it. You know what I'm but saying? But I'd have to so. kill him. Like he would, but he'd have to kill us. Give me, give us like a a, a twenty grade. There, He's, like... whatever he says is gonna be a lie. And honestly, <laughs> and honestly, I respect it because yeah. I have a thing where like if I have talked to such disrespectful men on the app where they have mm, asked me. Uh, before we've even met how many people I've slept with what's my no, body count that. and I will never answer that question no. one 
Why can't y'all ask me then? I, well, because we're sitting in the same room, and I'm curious. And, I, <laughs> and it's kind of in jest. That's why I'm saying, like, don't even answer. I mean, I don't care, but... I mean, if I knew, I would tell you, but yeah. I would just have to sit back and think about it, you know, That's do some calculations. And, uh... Bottle yeah. some fingers and toes, mm. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I need a notebook. <laughs> anyway okay cool well i definitely learned something um it just made me a little bit curious because yeah i just yeah well i think that 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 scenario that you're talking about with the show is to like what counts as intercourse what counts as and and that was like what counts as cheating and that's like its own thing and i think that that's a whole different dialogue right what happens if you're in a queer relationship or even a straight, like, okay, let me ask you, if, yeah. in a straight relationship, if uh, a dude that you're dating then goes off and fingers a girl. That's cheating. It's cheating, It's right? not intercourse to me, but it is cheating. So, interesting, right? Like, yeah. how does that differentiate itself? I don't know. It's just like, even if you kissed, it would be cheating. Okay. Still is not intercourse. But it's still cheating. Still cheating. Interesting. Okay. It's a sexual act. It's a sexual act, right? But it's so, not sex. To okay, me. to me. And I guess I just never thought it was a personal decision, but yeah, it for sure fucking is. Yeah. I'm t- talking to you, future husband. Yeah, we're looking at you. We're looking at you. I can't wait to be at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> at this, I'm going to give a great toast. At this rate. <laughs> we don't know if that's happening. <laughs> um, okay, so that was kind of my only question. I mean, I loved the ultimatum. Um, one of my friends who, and I don't know how she identifies, I didn't, I've never asked her this question, and shame on me i will but um i know that she does have a fiance a, a woman fiance now mm-hmm. um but she posted the other day like me and my fiance watching the ultimatum like damn these people move on fucking fast like straight people do not do this and oh, it's rough and uh i think at the <clears throat> nightcap um someone mentioned that as well he's like i've been along i think maybe it was eight or ten years and he's like and being in the in the queer community, that's, like, really something to be proud mm-hmm. of. And I kind of thought about him saying that and then my friend posting that on her social media and then the show, how they were just, they were so, they were so ready to be married to somebody else in two seconds flat. Most of them. I, I fucking hate it because it's, there's this weird thing, like, and I'm going to say this, like, as, like, a, a lesbian identifying individual, right? Like, there is kind of this uh, understanding that, like, and, I want to say understanding because I don't, I genuinely do not think it's false. Okay. Like, you have close bonds with women, right? It's really easy for you to fall into a pattern with a woman where you're like, okay, great. We have this, like, intimate connection. We can do all of the things together, right? We can go shopping. We, like, think about this. Like, you have sex with your partner. Excuse me. We can have sex with your partner in the morning. Get up. Have coffee. Get yourself ready. Do your Target and Starbucks run. Love. Great. Sounds And then you come back and then you're like, oh, I guess we're going to cook dinner and then we're going to watch a movie and bang again. Fucking cool. (laughs) Great. That sounds awesome. Right? Like, what an intimate connection. Imagine that on repeat. Yeah. Yeah. No shit you're going to be connected to that person. Right. Especially when you're on a similar wavelength or in communication and like. Similar place in life. Sure. And like all of that is in theory, right? Mm -hmm. That's not to say that every queer relationship is like that. But in theory, it kind of sounds dope. Yeah. (laughs) Like you're able to like kind of make that quick decision to be like, oh, we're going to spend a lot of time together. We're we're going to do a lot of We enjoy spending time together. We're going to do this a lot. Like, cool. Yeah. Uh, That in and of itself is, I think, the way that folks think about lesbian relationships. And I wish that we were in a position to change that. But it just is fucking true sometimes. Or it just happens to be. That like U-Haul kind right. of, you know, stereotype happens. I hate the idea of folks thinking that that's true, but it kind of is. You hate that it is a true stereotype. Yeah, it's a little bit of a truism. Um, sometimes. I mean, sure, not always, but it, it is a stereotype. But I guess like, Think about this and, like, would you want that with whoever your male partner is? Yeah. Right? It's like, a positive thing. Immediately. Like, yeah. you definitely want that to that be That is case. what I want. Yeah, you want to be able to be like, hey, this is really cool and we're going to continue to do this thing. Yeah, let's just sign yeah. up together. Ride that wave. Yeah. Done. Let's do it. Yeah. Sounds fun. And so I Sounds think. safe, comfortable. Yeah. 
and that tends to be emotionally secure all those things and i think that tends to be the way that women operate in relationships and and you're doing it with another woman yeah not a fucker guy yeah no offense don't look why at him like that. Why are you pointing at me? Yeah, well, don't look at him like well, that. Well, you're just the only guy in the room, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't look at him right. like that. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, so I think that tends to be kind of the reasoning and kind of the case behind it, which is its own nightmare in <laughs> of itself. This has been really enlightening. Yeah, I'm here to help. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, okay, go to your, you were going to tell me um, more about uh, the lipstick lesbian, and I'm, again, like, that. I haven't used that term, but I think when I thought of what a them presenting woman was i think sure. in my head i thought it was you know lipstick um but i can understand why that's outdated yeah i think like the the concept of and i'm saying this like as it's my own concept it's not the concept of the way in which lesbians identify and queer people identify in general has always operated on a binary right like you're either mask presenting or femme presenting Mm -hmm. and that goes for men and women and now that there is a open acceptance of uh queer identifying people inter uh you know sort of more non-binary presenting folks uh i think that that's kind of been a little bit dismantled in mm-hmm. a really wonderful way um, and should be celebrated as such. And so the idea being like, okay, a uh, queer relationship, a femme relationship, a mask relationship, whether it's with men, women, or somebody who is non-binary or however that translates is kind of a cool thing because mm-hmm. like you used to have like 90s, early 2000s, and obviously far before that, I would say in our contemporary history, you had like, all right, I'm butch. And if I identify as such, I have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. I have to wear male presenting clothing and I have to have male presenting, like presenting haircut and da, 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 da. And I have to do those things. And I have to open the doors and I have to do that. I have to be a top in the sex like component and I have to do that. Be the one who pays on the day. Yeah, yeah, all of that, right? You have to fulfill that particular role. Mm -hmm. The lipstick component is like, okay, well, I'm... Like, the pretty girl, I wear whatever, I am just more femme presenting. And now I think because we have a clearer understanding of a uh, non-binary, truly a non-binary association with identification, we're in a position where we can say, okay, cool, I might identify in this in this particular scenario. And maybe I fix cars, and maybe I ride motorcycles, and maybe I wear my hair up in this, and maybe I wear uh, boots instead of heels. But I'm also a little sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I'm a little sensitive to this. And then you have these, like, particular folks who are maybe more femme presenting that might have been, quote unquote, like, lipstick lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. Who are sitting there going, like, yeah, well, but I also work in tech, and I also work in automotive, and I also work in, like, more male presenting roles and I also wear X, Y, and Z and Mm -hmm. you might not see that but when we go out I do blah. Right. So it's just doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Do whatever the fuck you want. Like truly yes. Do whatever the fuck you want. And so I think the the binary of like lipstick versus butch is being a little bit dismantled now. And so like this kind of non-binary identity and and I say kind of not to take away from a non-binary identifying individual but like I would say that individual is holistic in and of themselves, um, but the non-binary way in which people can identify to say, I float kind of in between is really fucking cool. that's okay, and I don't need to define it. It's really fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. We've come a long way. I mean, we have so... We have so... We have so so much further to go. go. (laughs) Yeah. In so many ways, but... Yeah, it's kind of nice when you think about and, like, your perspective on... Hey, we are evolving Mm -hmm. and hearing it from, you know, your own mouth, someone who's been going, going through it firsthand. Well, I mean, you brought up Ultimatum and I like sit there and I think about like watching uh, the L word Mm. when I was a kid, like, and I would like watch the L word as like my vision into and like kind of my, my like kind of gaze into what lesbian culture was like. And it's really cool to see that now that particular lifestyle is being celebrated on a more like mainstream way it was on showtime right oh, yeah. like which was like at like oh midnight. dear you or did not 11. watch that back no. then it was like oh do you have to have a subscription <laughs> <Back> then <laughs> oh dear 20 years ago no way like you had to have like a subscription you had to be like 
oh dear, like we're gonna watch in the shadows. And yeah, then, which oh, my friend was like, yeah, it was like, yeah, I could watch it at night, like under the covers, and like kind of see a vision of like what this life would be like. And I'm saying this as somebody who, again, coming from a place of privilege and understanding, yeah. and like being celebrating my queerness and celebrating being a lesbian, like feeling safe in that for the majority of my life. That's not everybody's experience, and I definitely recognize that. Right. But like that's really cool for folks and it was really cool for me in that time to be like oh this is a, this is a way of life yeah it's cool to see the steps forward yeah. even though we're you know stagnant in some ways and stepping back in some ways yeah. but it is good to see and to see like ultimatum be doing that where it's like this is I a know. like national program on like a fucking netflix let's go can i tell you though <laughs> i and actually tell me how you feel about there being a straight host do you feel any type of way about the I'm host really being? mad that it's not reba Mm. mostly because she was okay. on Reba. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, when they, I think one of the, one of the women asked or one of the people asked the host, oh, can I ask, are you straight or how do you identify? Yeah. And she said straight. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. So I, real quick backstory. I know we're, we're kind of coming close to time, but I worked in the costume industry for TV mm. and movies years ago. And I'm kind of sensitive to when they cast somebody, even like on animation, like they cast a white presenting person or a white person to play a colored, like a black person or a Mexican person or an Indian um, or Asian role. And I'm like, there's jobs for, you yeah. know what I mean? Like get the person that should have the job. Right. And I, so that's kind of how I felt on the ultimatum. I was like, give that job to a queer or a femme or a mask presenting queer. It's a host. voyeurism conversation. And I think that that's a, a big problem with the show and not to bash the show. Cause I do think it brings up a, a lot of wonderful conversation, but it's also like a pretty like heteronormative lens where there's like a lot of mask presenting folks oh, I'm sure. with a lot of femme presenting folks. And it all kind of seems to fit into that norm, into that model. And there's a lot to dive into. Right. We could have like another hour and a half of conversation yeah. plus about that. Um, but I will say I think it's safe for the program to have a white, het, cis identifying yeah, I just female they, as the host. With, and I, I don't know if this is the right thing to say. I think they missed the mark. I think that yep. um, on that, I think that we as a human society and the people who watch that show could have benefited from seeing someone that identified more with with the show but well i also don't think that the host has a whole lot to do with it right like i don't really think no, that she's course, super but, but i do think that it would have been cool to have an identification of like and a uh showcase so to speak of yeah. somebody who was uh not white cis het right well on love is blind like i mean sure. i watched that they have a couple a married mm -hmm. couple because that's the goal they're gonna get married like yep. i don't know anyway again that could, different topic for a different day but Truly i was yes, just yeah. like huh shoot i think they missed the mark yeah um okay well shit we've covered oh, shit. a lot dear god dear god um <laughs> okay we're gonna do a wine of the week Kay. and we kind of mentioned it before Kay. and you were doing the whole thing that everybody Ooh. does and they're like i'm so positive Whoa. I never said that. <laughs> I said that. And then you said, no, I'm not. No. Um, but I'm going to say my one of the week and then we can okay, go for it. harp on it. And I've talked about it a lot on my social media this week. It's bras. It's bras for tits. It's bras. Um, I have denied my entire life that I'm a 36. Cinco, close your ears. Close them up. <laughs> a 36 triple D. Um, I've denied it. <laughs> Why? Because the bras are so disgusting. They literally... They're granny bras. They're granny bras. They're huge. They could fit over my face. And I just don't feel any sort of cute, sexy, fine, fun, young blah. So I always squeeze them down into a 36D, which makes me not comfortable. It's painful. And also, it just doesn't look right in a top. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to start. And also, this is TMI, as I always do. My nipples are something else. <laughs> okay. They're kind of right. always popping. So like the idea of having like an unpadded or like an They under popping out or they popping up? <laughs> <laughs> popping. What's what do you mean? I like are we going like like oh, areola like, scenario uh, or are we going like out? Just like out. <laughs> like uh, how big are they, girl? <laughs> like, <laughs> like full bra size. <laughs> like there's something else. They cannot be contained. 
No. They're popping. They're out. out. They're out. They're going this way. Okay, cool. See? They're looking at the horizon. <laughs> Heard. Cinco has questions if you can see the confused look on his face. <laughs> I mean, it's a fair, it's a fair um, ask. No, they're constantly just like hard. Okay. Um, and so I can't really do a unlined. <laughs> I can in life because I think. Yeah. Bear sure. the nip, but like in a work scenario, I can't be wearing like a fitted tee and just have my nips out. Yeah, why it's not? It's not. It's frowned upon, and it does. I'm By not who? comfortable from the corporate people. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I'm trying to work on it. So anyway, I'm on this road to finding bras in my size and being comfortable with how they look i just want them to properly fit me and i'm i'm on i'm on the the hunt so okay. i've got some suggestions i'm gonna order a bunch do you have these issues where do you yes. get bras oh my god very much um i am also a large chested individual same a breasty chesty if yeah. you will um and i fucking hate trying to find bras i also Miserable. have been like and maybe this comes into a whole identity conversation we were having earlier, like mask and femme and da 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 da. Like, I wear a lot of sports bras for that reason because okay. I don't find like other bras to be very comfortable. Mm-hmm. So like that is a big part of my wine for this week. It's yeah. like that is not something that's comfortable for me. And recently, I was going to a pool party, and I have not. I really don't think I've worn like an actual bathing suit, like bikini top, like scenario mm-hmm. in years really like truly I, I think I've always just done like now in retrospect I'm like I think I've just done like sports bra okay and that's about it and like have just not been comfortable with it so I was like fuck it I'm gonna do it and I went out and I bought like a XXL whatever it was and I was like these are arbitrary sizes like yeah. I hate this yeah and so my wine for this week is that where it's similar to yours I put this on like the cup size great all that like but it is, it, it feels like it's a chunky old lady top where like I can't have, I don't know why it's just poorly designed. And I'm sure that there are wonderful designers out there who have solved this problem that I've just not found. Same. And I'm going to find one. Where it's like, you need a cup size that makes sense to actually cover boob. Yeah. Side and all. Yeah. <laughs> and Definitely also, the side. Please like, the side. I like like a string top. I don't want like a chunky ass yeah. goddamn sports bra, one inch, two inch like scenario over the shoulder. Like I don't want that tan line. I don't want any of that. And then also like it requires support. Yeah. Which is its own issue. And so all of that is to say giant boobs, pain in the ass. That's <laughs> Yeah, I guess maybe is the wine giant boobs or is yeah. it bras? I'm not sure. I think Both. it's the giant boobs. Okay, that's the problem. And that there's nobody to support us, including the broad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always, since I was little, yeah. asked, like, why didn't I have a flat chest? Like, yeah. I just wanted to wear, when I was little, I wanted to wear a halter top with Ugh. nothing, you know? My sister asked constantly. She's like, I can't wait to have big boobs. And I'm like, no. No. You don't want it. Don't, you nobody don't want wants it. it. Manifest no big boobs. Zero. That's my wine of yeah. the week. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Titty <Uh-oh>. city. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Welcome yeah, to Titty city. <laughs> yeah, the pool. I'm usually topless, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just oh. encourage everyone else to be That's top. so good. Yeah, I mean, I, mean a... I fucking wish. Let's go. Yeah. I don't think anyone has a problem with it. Okay. Yeah, okay. You know yeah. So, I mean, if there's kids around, then obviously. Time and a place. Right. But if not, oh, hey, so by all means. so kind of you to encourage yeah, them to take means. their tops off. That's really kind of you. You know you. what? <laughs> Pull your tits out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dump them out, man. Dump let's, them out. Let's start, you know. No, no pull. That requires like a certain level of action. It's a dump. Dump them out. Jump them out. Yeah, I'm not asking you to do more work. I want you to just do it. You shouldn't be ashamed. And you're just a big supporter of women, so that's why you're saying that. Absolutely. absolutely. You're kind of the bra of all women. Um, wow. What? You just support us all. Yeah, pull your tits out. Wow. Yeah. You On that note. You shouldn't be ashamed job, about buddy. it. On that note. <laughs> well, here we are. Cheers, Kay. <laughs> Thank you for joining yeah. us. My pleasure. Um, okay, what are your socials? Where can we find you? Um, you can find me at uh, smallest batch, smallest underscore batch on Instagram. That's is that the best way. Uh, to infer like smallest bitch or is it batch of whiskey? Like batch of whiskey. Like okay. small batch. Got it. Okay. But I'll be mean to you if you need me to. Well, <laughs> not, not a bitch in a mean way. Like, yeah, I'm no, that smallest bitch. I'm that batch. bitch. Okay, smallest yeah. undergore, underscore undergore. Batch. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> Kind of accurate. Like, <laughs> um, as yeah. usual, you can find me on Instagram, adultish wines, A D U L T I S H W H I N E S. On YouTube, adultish wines. Go subscribe. 
and obviously my personal page underscore crutcher c-r-u-t-c-h-e-r cinco i'm gonna hand it to you but please don't say the thing about the lime Rita. <laughs> please don't <laughs> All right, I'll leave it out. Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Cinco Young, C I N Q O Y U N G. You can catch me on Apple Music, Spotify. Catch me on YouTube. Um, I should be, Paige says she's going to help me with some music videos coming out, even though there's a writer strike going on. So we'll see. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. Cool. Okay, that's it. Love y'all. See you next week. Bye.